Welcome to e Know How. In this video, we will look at how to add asynchronous set or reset inputs to a CMOS latch. So let's look at the CMOS latch that we have looked at before. So it had three consists of three inverters and two pass gates. So we had the latch with built with inverters A, B, and switch S2, switch S1, and inverter 1. Then this is D in here, and Q out here. And we also saw that the switch S1 is closed with enable, and the switch S2 is closed with enable bar. So we had an inverter which brings an enable and inverts it to give the signals that are needed for the CMOS pass gates S1 and S2. So this is the, the CMOS latch. Now how do we add a set or reset input for the CMOS latch? Let's look at what we can do here is we will change the gates 1, the inverters, 1 and B to NAND gates. So let's look at that one, the first one. So let me draw the new uh, new schematic with so this gate is changed to a NAND gate, one of the input is D in, and then you still have the switch S1 and you have the inverter A as is. So the inverter 1 has become a NAND gate 1 now. So this is the output of inverter A goes to another NAND gate now. And then you have the switch. And you have the same connection that was there before. So this is inverter B now turned into a NAND gate. Now let's see what to do with these two inputs, the second two input NAND gates. So let me, this is switch S1, S2, they remain the same, they are the CMOS uh, pass gates. And now we have to look at what we do with these two inverters, with these two inputs of the NAND gates and how they affect the operation of this circuit. So let's take the input of this NAND gate is high, the input of NAND, this NAND gate is also high, the second input. So what happens here is D in bar, the output of the NAND gate is just D, D in bar. So it acts like an inverter. The same thing here, so you have the Q out here. So the output of the NAND gate B is Q out bar. So if this input is high, it does not affect the operation of the latch. So it just acts like a, like inverters. The two NAND gates 1 and B act like inverters like in the first case. So they do not affect the circuit operation and it still functions like a latch. So now let's look at the other case when, let me use a different color, when these inputs are 0. So when these inputs are low what happens is, irrespective of D in, this output is high. Now, the output of a NAND gate is high when the input is low. And the same thing happens in this case. This is not, no longer Q or bar, but it will be a high here. So now, if you look at, uh, and we know that uh, this uh, switch is controlled by enable, and this switch is controlled by enable bar. So irrespective of what the state of enable is, so what happens is the input of the inverter A will always be a high, will always be a high, which means that Q out is forced to zero. So when this input is low, when this input is low, Q out is forced to zero. So what, what it is, is it is basically a reset, 
reset bar input. So now if you bring have another inverter, if you want a reset input instead of a reset bar, so we get reset here. So this is reset, this input, and this is reset bar, reset bar, and then this reset bar goes and connects to here as well as to this. So once the reset bar goes and connects there, so if reset is high, reset is high, and reset bar will be low, and once reset bar is low, we saw that the Q out will be forced to low, so the latch is reset when you have reset high here. So this is how you introduce a reset signal. Now, to introduce a set signal, what we can do is, we can modify the circuit in a different way. So here, what we do is, we change the inverter 1 and the inverter B to NOR gates. Now what we do is, we make them NOR gates. We still have the switch here, the inverter A. And then we have a NOR gate here. Oops, sorry about that. We have a NOR gate. We have the switch S2. The connection is still the same. Let me move it this way. So now what with this is inverter B, which became a NOR gate now. So this is a NOR. So now let's look at now we said one of the input is D in and this is Q out and this we need to see where to connect these two inputs here the second inputs now let me use a different color here so if this signal is zero so assume this is ground then what happens is the output of the the output here will be D in bar and the output here will be Q out bar. So this acts like a normal latch. So when this input is low. But when this input is high, let me use a different color. When this input goes high, the output of the NOR gate is forced to low. And then same thing here, when this input goes high, so the output of the NOR gate here is forced to low, which means the input of uh, inverter A is low irrespective of enable or enable bar, irrespective of which switch is closed. So enable or enable bar, it doesn't matter. So you have a low here and Q out will be forced to a high. So what it means is, this is nothing but this is nothing but a set input. You don't need any inversion here. This is the set input for the latch. So this is how you add a set input for the latch by making the two inverters into NOR gates. And now when you looked at here to add a reset input, you made the two inverters 1 and B to be a uh, NAND gates and so we add a reset bar input and then we can get a reset input by adding an inverter here this inverter which will will give you reset bar <coughs> so here we looked at how to transform the CMOS latch uh, to add asynchronous set or reset inputs